What am I doing with my life? <laughs> Why am I here? Who? <laughs> no, we're not having a meltdown. We're pondering the proverbial questions we all ask ourselves, or at least we should, if we want to have a fulfilling and complete life of total well-being. That's why on today's episode number 309 of the Queer Money Podcast, we're talking about an ancient Japanese philosophy called Ikigai. Take the first step in reaching financial well-being by paying off your credit card debt. Get your free copy of the seven-step credit card debt slasher at QueerMoneyPodcast.com. Now on with the show. So I think uh, post COVID and with the great resignation and people moving across country, starting a whole new lives and careers, I think a lot of people are, are, are seeking something. They're looking for something more than what they had pre COVID. They're looking, I think, for more happiness and well being and validation and, and love and purpose. And that's why we want to talk about this topic of Ikigai. It's a philosophy that, that we've followed for a couple of years now and that has really worked out for us. And I think um, part of why we sought this out for ourselves was, as many of you know, once upon a time, we had $51,000 in credit card debt. And after years and years and years of trying to peel back the onion to figure out exactly how we got into that situation, despite knowing better in theory, um, what we were doing was seeking validation and love. And I think that's sort of what a lot of people are seeking today. And um, I think for a lot of people, especially the ones that we work with who find themselves in precarious financial situations, very often the, the, the financial situation is a symptom of something else. At least that's what it was for us and for many of the people that we work with. And cu coupling that together with the world that we live in today and everything that's going on, we thought it would be appropriate to talk about this philosophy called Ikigai. I think that there's, there's this kind of idea that change doesn't really happen um, until people get fed up with the situation that they're in, right? Mm -hmm. More often and then the change has to come, true change has to come from inside. And I think that's what's happened is that, that COVID and what is going on in the world today has exposed to many people that they're not happy with the status quo, that maybe some of us have gotten a little bit um, uh, apathetic about the direction that our lives are going in. And that's why many people are saying, you know what? I don't like this. I'm not, I don't, I don't want, I never really wanted this job or this job <laughs> never really was the job that gives me the fulfillment that I thought it was going to give me uh, or living here is not where I really want to live. Right. So there people are starting to ask the, all of those kinds of questions. And I think that's, what's bringing about this, this whole idea of the great migration, the great resignation, people are thinking, Things need to change. I don't like the way they are right now. Right. And that's not to discount the fact that there are systemic challenges that many of us face. Right. Um, but often we find that those aren't affecting us as much as we give them credit for. And also most of those circumstances are overcomable. You just have to have the right purpose and the right motivation. And, and that's exactly the, the, the purpose of this particular episode today. Right. So how do we find that? How do we find that? that kind of purpose that gives us the motivation to make those changes in our lives that bring about that fulfilling life, right? We have to ask those proverbial questions, yeah. those questions that we talked about at the outset in the intro, the, the questions that really, I think you kind of get down to that, that why, right? You think of that two-year-old or three-year-old that's sitting there saying, why, but why, but why, but why? And sometimes maybe that's, sometimes your husband, right? And sometimes I, I, I honestly think that many of us do things that we think are going to make us happy, but we haven't asked the why question enough to drill down into the true reason why we're looking for change and why we're spending this money or why we're taking this vacation or why we're ending this relationship. Is it because of what we are, are, are truly searching for, or is it just that we're doing doing this out of uh, what we see today, many people are doing it because it's a symptom of what's going on in the world. So that's why we wanted to dig into this Ikigai, because I think Ikigai it, at its foundation really helps you uncover these, the, the basis for the whys. So what is Ikigai? Well, Ikigai is Japanese and it's interpreted in English as reason for being. And basically it's a combination of two Japanese words. The first being Iki, which, which stands for either 
alive or life, and the latter being guy, which stands for benefit or worth. And combined, it's that which gives your life meaning, purpose, or worth. And it's not just about what it is I want to do in life. Uh, it, it's it's really, as David said, digging deep, asking that why, and, and, and going way deep into that onion and figuring out what it is I really, really, really want to do. And how do I combine that over a couple of other factors uh, of what the world needs and, 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 and what I can get paid for that really helps you find your true purpose in life. Um, the Japanese psychologist Michiko Kamano defines it as the state of well-being one gets from a sense of fulfillment. So it's not just about my job. Right. It's not just about uh, what I can get, what, what, how much I can acquire, but it's actually a true state of happiness and fulfillment. And that can only be accomplished uh, by, a couple, by discovering a couple of factors, which we're going to dive into right now. Right. So Ikigai is actually, it's a Venn diagram. So for those of you who, uh, who didn't, don't like math or math subjects, right? Venn di a Venn diagram is actually where um, the shapes op uh, overlap and you find where, where they overlap. That piece in the middle is where you're going to find the most value. That's the good stuff. Right? right? Exactly. Um, so in this case, there are four circles that overlap that you find that if you can find that middle piece uh, and land on it, that's where you're going to find your most fulfillment. So what are these four pieces? Well, the first one is what do you love? The second one is what are you good at? The third one is what the world needs. And finally, the fourth one is what you can get paid well for. So let's take a look at those individually, right? What do you love? Do you love to sing? <laughs> I do love to sing, David. I do love to do, sing. Do you love teaching people? Do you love helping others, right? What are the kinds of things that you actually find enjoyment doing, right? Right. So the question is, I mean, if you're not happy with your current job, do you love your current job, right? Are you getting fulfillment from that? That's an important question. A lot of people are at their current job because it's paying the bills, but are you happy every day? I mean, you've got to be working even still. Um, you're still working 40 hours a week at least. Are you, do you want to spend those 40 hours a week being miserable and happy or bored or just you know being a robotic? Right, exactly. And I think that the, this, the second one really kind of lends itself to the first one in that this is also what you're good at, right? What are you good at do doing? Are you good at painting? Are you good at listening and hearing what other people are saying? Are you good at science and math? Am I good <laughs> at singing, husband? I don't know. Are you? <laughs> we're not going to start. We're not going to start a fight on the on the podcast here. <laughs> but the fact that you, you, you know, I think a lot of people don't necessarily like their jobs because they're not necessarily good at what they do right? They struggle with what they do. Maybe they have some frustrations because they don't have enough of the training or skills to actually make their job just slightly easier or feel like it's smooth sailing, right? So then the, the next piece is what the world needs, right? So what does the world need? We know the world needs therapists. We know the world needs leaders. It needs energy efficiency. It does. The world needs my singing. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> right. So as you're layering these various pieces over now, you have um, what do you love to do? What are you good at? And what the world needs? You're starting to build up this layer uh, and reduce down the number of things. And then finally, you land on what can you get paid well for, right? Is somebody going to pay John well for his singing? Well, that's oh, yeah. a question we need to ask the world. My eight track comes out next week. We'll find out. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Right. There are some things that people actually love to do, some things that they're really good at, but nobody is going to pay them anything for it. Right. Either because there's a huge supply of it or it's no longer valued in the world today. So we want to find those kinds of things that actually pay us well. Remember, being broke isn't noble. Right. It, it, the idea of us thriving financially is really important, right? Because thriving financially allows us to help not only ourselves, but help others and not be a, and not having to rely on others. I th think this is a challenge for a lot, a lot of LGBTQ people. Abundance is your birthright. You aren't required to struggle and to, to make it hard to make ends meet and to worry about putting food on the table. 
abundance is your birthright. So do what you need to do to achieve that abundance, because it's only through abundance when the cup is overflowing that you actually have more that you can give to the world, and especially the LGBT community. Yeah. So what's next? That's step number three here. What is next? Well, the idea here is you want to sort of step this out, right? So David just outlined the four questions that you want to ask yourself. What do you love doing? What are you good at doing? What does the world need that you can do? And what can you get paid well for? Well, as always, we highly recommend journaling. Yeah. Just grab a couple pieces of paper, grab a journal, uh, grab a, a moleskin notebook, whatever you like. And at the top of four different pages, ask, write down those those four questions, and then just freestyle handwrite what it is, how you would answer those questions. Try not to, to limit yourself. Just let your, let your hand move across a page and see what you come up with. In time, you'll be able to narrow things down. You'll start to see trends and patterns. You'll start to be able to cross some things out, and, and you'll ultimately be able to figure out what it is you want to do. I'll throw in here, um, I got a reminder recently when we were speaking with someone, I don't particularly love journaling. Oh, I find yeah. it hard to journal, to actually write things out. And the recommendation I got was to grab my phone and just pull out the voice recorder and record what I would normally write. And it allows me to free flow free form my, my words out. And then I can go back and listen to those or use dictation to actually have that written out. And then I can see there what it is that I'm actually thinking when I'm asking myself the, 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 these questions. If you don't enjoy journaling and if you find it a struggle, give that tip a try. Whether you do the, the recording or you do journaling, the idea is just freestyle, right? Don't worry about grammar, punctuation, spelling, whatever. Just freestyle and let your brain flow. What you're kind of doing is, is, is brainstorming without any restrictions. Which is probably hard for the grammar Nazi that's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, then if you want to take that to an even deeper level, then we highly suggest you listening to Queer Money episode number 27, on which we interviewed our good friend, Megan Watt, where she talked about her book, Discover, Act, Engage which she describes as a 60-day catalyst to accomplishing all of your, what she calls her, your someday goals. Those things that we say that we want to achieve someday that but few of us ever actually achieve because we don't come up with a plan to do so. So if you want to step it out beyond just asking yourself those four questions and figure out what your execution plan is to make those those answers to those questions become a reality, we suggest listening to Queer Money episode number 27. Now, one of the reasons why we're talking about this, this is the four, fourth point here, why are we talking about Ikigai? Well, it's because this is part of our financial well-being theme. You know, we believe that financial well-being empowers people. It saves them time and money for the things that are important in life, right? The things that truly matter. It is your holistic journey that enhances your metal, mental, physical, and financial health, right? Financial well-being means that you're not struggling with those other things because you have the finances to take care of yourself physically, to take care of yourself mentally. Your financial health is not a detractor to your physical or mental health, right? We believe this, and that's why we partner with Capital One, because they believe this too. Actually, part Capital One is our partner in this financial well-being theme all throughout the year. And we, we, we believe this so much that John and I have talked about the five building blocks of a happy gay life. These are the things that we believe are the foundation of building the life that we all want. It's similar to Ikigai and actually can be overlaid on top of asking those four questions of yourself. So those five building blocks are? Love money, wellness, lifestyle, all with a foundation of direction and purpose, which that foundation is way to fi figure that out is to figure out what your ikigai is. And as David said, we believe so many of us get myopically focused on only one or two areas, right? We all we all we're concerned about is finding that partner or all we're concerned about is, is, is acquiring as much wealth as we possibly can. But if we don't have a complete 360 holistic perspective on life that we're trying to provide complete fulfillment, um, then we're going to always be running into areas of our life that, that makes us unhappy, that frustrate us, that cause sickness and other challenges. So you want to look at your life for as a with a 360 degree approach, which, uh, as David said, we, we consider the five building blocks of a happy gay life. We strongly believe this as well as Capital One, which is why we're doing this uh, financial well-being series throughout the entire year.
And, you know, I think one of the things is this, this will may, may help with this whole idea of what does Ikigai possibly look like? Who is someone that we all know that is most likely hitting all four of these, loving what they do, good at it, it's what the world wants and needs, and they can get paid well for it. I come up with the, the example of RuPaul, right? It's clear RuPaul loves what she's doing. She is good at what she does. And clearly there is a demand in the world for what it is that she's doing because her star keeps on rising. And holy crap, she is getting paid a shitload of money. That woman is a millionaire multiple, multiple times over because she hits all of these points, right? And so if you want to have not only financial success, but that feeling of not wanting to run away from your job, not wanting to run away from your career, not needing to pick up and, and flee from a particular situation, think about how you can find your ikigai with all four of these, not only just with what, what you do for work, but that will bleed over into the rest of your life because most likely, as the saying goes, if you love what you do for work, you will never work another day in your life, right? So it, this is kind of that fulfillment of that if you're hitting all four of these points. So in review, what is your guy? Well, it's the intersection of asking yourself and coming to the answer of these four questions. What you'd love doing, what you're good at doing, what the world needs, and what you get paid well for. And don't forget to buy my eight track in one week. <laughs> Stay tuned for your queer money takeaway from this episode. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Queer Money Podcast. Here's your queer money takeaway from this episode. Capital One cafes are free. They have free Wi-Fi. And they sell delicious coffee. So go to the cafe with your journal, your phone, or your laptop, and give yourself some time and the space to answer the four questions that will help you discover what your ikigai is. Also, there are designated quiet spaces in each cafe that are perfect for this exercise to give you some solitude. Ask a cafe ambassador to help you find one. Finally, the sooner you pay off credit card debt, the sooner you too can reach financial well-being. Get your free copy of the seven-step credit card debt slasher at queermoneypodcast.com. We'll talk with you next week.